Joe W. Brewster, um, our episode today has to do with hot passing. Very important. Uh, a good bead in hot pass is 70% of the strength of the well. That's what I've read. I don't know. I'm not a metallurgist. But I think that's probably true from other experiences I've had. All right, I'm using our rec room here today because one picture is worth a thousand words. All right, and I kind of went over and over my head, and this is what I came up with. Let's imagine this pool table here. You see this little border? Let's imagine that this is the bevel. This is the bevel for one of your pups or one of your joints, and this is the other. So this is our well groove right here, okay? This is going to be our B. We've ran a root in here, and we need to grind it now. How much you grind it is up to each welder. What can you live with? What can you get slotted out with? Uh, sometimes the procedures now don't allow you to weld real hot. If you're not going to grind much, then you need to run hotter. If you can't go very hot, then you need to grind more if you want to beat the extra. But the reason we grind this is because you see this has a crown to it. Okay, I, I think I said it in a, in a weld bevel, it looks like a straw laying in there and it's rounded. The whole point of grinding it is to get this crown down at least flat. You want, it, you want it flat so that rod can get down here on top of these wagon tracks that are in each one of these bevel sides, okay? There's a lot of different ways to do this. Some people, particularly in oil field with a valid inspection, they use this hot pass for a filling pass. Now, if you're on a quality job, a lot of inspection, they're not going to be letting you do that. The second thing is, on a lay barge or even on a fast-moving pipeline, they need these things hot pass. Some gas companies will not let you uh, Put the pipe down until you get a bead and hot pass. So sometimes you're running roots and hot passes, maybe half of one before they let you sit it down. Lay barge is the same way. You had to run uh, the, the least I've seen and let you run is two hot pass rods off the top after we ran the bead. That way the pipe doesn't crack, especially if it's rough seas and the barge is moving a little bit. So it was all about speed and getting slagged out and what the old timers called healing the bead up. Well, what does that mean? That means you find the weak spots right there. You fix it right then, okay? You run hot enough, that's what happens. I've seen people, I saw somebody on a land job and they were trying to hot pass like this. They were going hot and they wanted to speed it up, but they were doing like a sewing machine. And what that did was it was undercutting the sidewall, just like you'd cut a U-shape here kind of, or a C, a C. And every place off that top that I could see, it was slag trapped in there. And if that filling head's not running hot, guess what? He's fixed the trap slab. So what I was taught, I believe is the best, is that you want it on an angle like this, 30 degree, 40 degree, whatever. Sometimes I get down here like this. The hotter I go, I go a little more down like this so I don't bust through it when I'm more up. So you lay it back uh, and you go fast. You'll see it on the inside. It'll light up like a light bulb, but it won't bust through unless you have a weak spot. So you want to strike off in front of it where you're going to start, and then I want to come into it. Just like the, uh, throwing a hot steak on a Texas barbecue, you hear it sizzle. You come in there and I'll shh. I pull back. A lot of times I let the rod touch on the, the uh, root pass. And then I come into it. I mean, when you rip it back, if you're hot enough, that arch is going to open that up on that uh, root a little bit. And you're going to be able to see those wagon tracks. You want to come back in hot enough that it sears and you can see it burn the tracks up. So that's a repetitive motion from top to bottom, like this. And when it's hot, you're gonna get those little V looking deals in the puddle. That's the shape of your puddle when you get through. When you get to the bottom, about four o'clock or 4.30, you can bend your rod a little bit so it's looking back at you. So it's ergonomic, because you always want it to look back just a little bit, so chopping like this. And uh, that's what I do. I bend my rod so I don't have to wrist throw my wrist so hard under there. It's more natural. But anyway, you get the point. Good bead, good hot pot. All right, we've um, we've shown the technique. Let's watch it being put into practice welding. Uh, 12 inch, 375 wall, 532 rods. You want to watch the rod angle here that I have. You want to watch my hand motion and action. And you want to listen to the sound. The sound's very important. It tells you what your rhythm's like. If your rhythm is good, then your hot pass is going to have the same shape, the same depth penetration, and it's going to turn out nice. If your hot pass is running hot enough, you should be able to see your root glowing inside if you're able to look in at it. 
And that's a sign that you're taking care of business. You can see as I, every time I move ahead, you can see it moving. It's uh, heat tracing. And uh, I'd also advise you to turn the sound off and just watch the motion without the sound. And uh, pay attention to what my hand's doing. And you can kind of count in your head, get a little bit of a rhythm. As your form gets better, your coordination will get better. The coordination gets better. You're able to turn the amps up. You get more amps. You get more speed until you'll reach your peak. Gerald W. Brister, that's your tip for today.